Hi, I'm Johnson. Welcome to my channel. If you've seen my other videos, you will know that I'm a big fan of 3D printers and 3D printing. Today, I have with me the ANET ET4 and we're gonna build it up. So the ET4 and the ET4 Pro, the steps are the same and the differences and other stuff, I'm gonna talk you through in this video. So let's get on to it. Firstly, let's open up the box. Of course, everyone know how to open up the box. So let's skip to this step. Now we have this, which is the belt. And then we have these tools that are provided. Um, some screws, well, very little, only six of them here. Some free PLA filaments. And this is the SD card and the SD card reader with one spare nozzle and of course your manual. But I really like this little tray which helps me organize all these things. And over here in the first tier of the box, we have the hot end. Now this is pre-assembled together with your Bowden tube. And we have the gantry with the Z-axis and the X-axis pre-assembled. Well, this particular one here, of course, is the ET4, but the ET4 Pro is actually all black design with some minor upgrades to the moto. Inet is very generous to include this print surface that can be stick on, but we are more interested in this glass bed anyway. Let's look at the little tray that I put aside just now and open up this pack of manuals. So what do we have here? A user manual? No, a setup manual, a user manual, and a parts list manual with all the parts that's included and a very nice thank you letter from Inet. Let's unpack the base of the 3D printer from the bottom tier and let's see what's hidden here. Ah, power cables and also the spool holder which we will install last. Seems like we've already unpacked everything so let's get on first step to install this gantry. Alright, so this gantry will go over here and in your manual is step one. You just need to fasten them using these screws. So screws are provided, only six of them and you just need four of the big ones. However, before we start, I'd like to share with you this trick. You just use a square to make sure that the gantry, the Z-axis itself is all square and nice because this will prevent you from having bad prints. So let's get on to installing these screws. If you're not sure, you can check back. Yep, step one are these four screws. So the best thing to do is just to slot all these four into these four holes. It's actually quite obvious, not much instructions needed, but a good tip will be using your fingers to fasten the screw until it's quite tight and then use this allen key the largest one that's provided to fasten them however don't tighten it too much yet because i have another tip to share oftentimes during the installation process the screw is slightly bent and it will impact the z-axis straightness so using this particular square we make sure that it is straight and then finally you can tighten them up if it's not straight, loosen it and redo it again. Once done, we can go to the next step. We can check the manuals again. The next step is to install the belt. The manual is trying to warn you on the directions of the belt and I will show you in details. So first of all, let's remove this cable tie. I wanted to cut it and then I realized it's actually a removable cable tie. Just press on it and you can reuse it again. So, and remove this particular foam that is protecting the lead screw. Now, you can lift up this particular X-axis. Oh, I realize that the rollers are a little bit too tight, but we're going to get into it later on. Let's remove this belt. And the belt has directions. Make sure that the teeth is actually inside and is going through both the rollers on the left and the right. Now let's unpack the hot end and inspect it. And this is the main fan in the housing. Very nice, all metal. That's the auto bed leveling sensor. Um, the fan for your print. That's the nozzle. And let me see, here are the rollers, which are a little bit tight, which we will try to adjust it later. 
So let's see which one is adjustable. So the bottom one has an eccentric nut, we can adjust that. The top seems to be fixed, so that's the eccentric nut. We can adjust that to loosen the rollers, right? Okay, and these two particular prong here is where we're going to install the belt later. Hmm. The build seems to be quite nice. The green stub here for the ET4 uses capacitive proximity switch but the ET4 Pro uses photoelectric sensor. Now let's install the hot end into our X-axis. Just slide them in, make sure that the belt is at the bottom and we're gonna hook them up. So first, hook on one side and make sure the entire belt is in it and over the rollers, all right? And of course, the teeth is inside, touching the rollers and the other end as well. All right. Once that's done, hook the other end in into the prong. Don't worry if it's still a little saggy because we are going to adjust and tighten that this side. So on the motor itself, we can just loosen these nuts. Right, loosen all four of it. What can we do is we can just pull it all the way to the other end. Make sure that it's tight. Tighten the top left screw first. And once it's tightened, what you can do is you can just twist the motor to tighten the other end. So once that's done, now we have it very tight. Very good. Twang, twang. All right. Once that's done, just Test it a few times and fasten the rest of the screws. Make sure it's firm but don't over tighten it. Now let's revisit the rollers here. You can see that the rollers are actually quite tight. Um, you can just use this wrench, turn on the eccentric nut and test the rollers again. So a little tip is to make sure that the rollers are not spinning freely like this but just enough to spin the whole axis up and down, all right? And let's test it again. Okay, so much smoother now. Uh, let's work on the right side. Same drill, just loosen it. I cannot tell you whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise because the eccentric nut goes round and round. So sometimes it's clockwise and sometimes it's anti-clockwise for you. We then go to step 3, which is the fun part of putting all the wires in. The good thing is, all these are well labeled, so it's very easy for you to install them. Just check it in your manual for all the labelings. The labelings are also on the board itself. Since we are here, let's take a look at this moto. So this particular one is for the ET4, and the ET4 Pro is using the silent moto. This part is step 3 in our setup manual. It might be confusing for people, however, everything is labelled clearly. We need to put in TMP, which is the temperature sensing probe for the hot end. And these uh, connectors are all directional, so it's very easy for you to just snap in. Make sure that the clip is facing upwards and snap them in. The next one is actually fan which is the fan uh, for your hot end. Yep, it's labeled here. You can see, fan one. Not sure why there's a one there. All right, snap it in. And then the top left is BL. All right, here, BL. And let's put it in. Okay. And let's look for LV, which is the leveling. It is a three pin, so you won't get it wrong. And let's see what is this. This says N, E N D. So N goes to the top right. And then LV, which is your leveling sensor, goes here with the three pin. Okay. Now we are done. Just make sure that everything is nice and tightly clipped on. Okay. Oh, this part is 3D printed. <laughs> kind of cool. Huh? So that is actually for your filament sensor. Last but not least, the entire ribbon assembly from the motherboard. So this is direction as well. Make sure the nudge is facing us and clip it in. For the bolden tube, the pneumatic coupling has already been accepted. 
assembled. You just need to push the tube all the way in and make sure that it is locked. If you push down the pneumatic coupling, you can remove the tube easily. I like this particular one, seems good quality. Alright, all the way in as tight as possible. Let's check all the other connections to make sure that all our cables are connected. Okay, we have for the X-axis motor. How about the Z-axis? Huh, seems like it's not connected yet and the wire should be under this foam. Let's take away this foam which is used to protect the bed from moving about. And there it is. We, in order to unfasten the bed, we have to remove this particular stopper. Alright, just peel them off. This silicon stopper is kind of fun. Now we can move it backwards and the front one as well. I realize the bed movement is a little bit rough and seems like the rollers are a little bit too tight. Now listen to this. Can you hear the uneven clunky roller sound? We're gonna fix it using this eccentric nut. So same way, just try to unloosen the eccentric nut and test it again. Okay, seems like we fixed it already. No more clunky sound and the bed is smooth now. With the bed out of the way, we can now access to the Z-axis connector. So what we're gonna do is remove the sticker properly, press the connector in, and we can actually reuse this particular sticker, carefully close the hole so that filaments and dust won't go in. Next very satisfying part is to take away all these stickers and wrappers. And uh, what you can do is install the uh, SD card that comes with it. It's directional, careful, turn it around and there you go. Don't force it in. Now will be the power cable and turn on the switch. So with it on, we can go into the menu and this is actually a touch screen. So you can just go into settings. Let's test all the axes and make sure that the connection and the motors are functioning well. Seems like we have a perfect build as all the axis is working well. To unlock the motor, just press on M and you can manually move the stepper motor. One of the best features in this 3D printer is of course the auto bed leveling. Jadi Life, who is the distributor of this printer, uploaded a very detailed video on how to level your bed properly. You can click on the link to check out their video. So we reached the end of this video on the assembly of ET4 or ET4 Pro. Stay tuned to my other videos to compare this printer with the other printers outside and also tips and tricks on this particular 3D printer. For Malaysian viewers who are interested to buy this printer, you can get it from Jadi Life. They are the official distributor for Malaysia and extra bonus for you if you put in the promo code KAKI DIY, you will get additional 3% off of your purchase. Alright, hope you find this video informational and helpful. Please do subscribe and leave us some comments to help us improve. See you next time in our videos. Bye bye.